going to install the Raspberry Pi 2B to the Pi desktop. This is the Pi desktop frame. This is its cover. It's got a switch here which depresses uh, another switch on this board. Here, this is the switch. Depresses and it reboots and such functions are there. Once there is a software package, once it has been installed into onto this board, it activates this switch. It's a good product. You can play with all the Linux distros, which is meant for the Pi. Once, and we could install that Debian package, which is meant for the switch. We have to install it first onto this board. That is, uh, once you install all these boards onto this Pi desktop frame, uh, what we have to do is install a Raspbian or JSC or whichever operating system which is meant for this Raspberry Pi. After we install it, then we have to download through this Pi desktop from 11.14 that uh, Debian package which controls the switch and once we install that onto the Raspbian or the Jesse or whichever software which is meant for this Pi, Raspberry Pi 2B or 3 or such the switch will start to work just to reboot and the, this switch functions will be uh, inside that package that is that Debian package we have to download from 11.14 the other uh, the operating system has to be downloaded from downloaded from the by uh, their website Raspberry Pi their web they got a website that you have to download from that so one one thing is download the operating system install it onto this uh, this card is there this card I have uh, got here this memory card this memory card uh, I have it I have installed the Nooms package from the Raspberry Pi forums, their website. This Noobs package is inside this. It is around 1.4 gigabytes, I guess. And uh, this Noobs package is installed in this. Just copy that, un unwrap it, and co put all the files from inside the Noobs uh, package onto this SD card. That's how you install the Noobs, Noobs package onto the SD card and put, push it into, into the Pi slot, the memory card slot. So it has already, the Noobs package has already been installed in this. And what you do is, once you have pushed this card in, it's pushed it. the card is in. Now you have to place it, this is the Pi, Raspberry Pi 2B. They have put that heat sink, you just peel off that uh, one, one side does this uh, double sided tape and uh, it's got a cellophane piece paste it onto it when you buy it and you just peel it off and press it onto the uh, its processor. This is the processor here. Just stick it onto it so that the heat dissipates and uh, the Pi is cooled. Otherwise, uh, if you leave it on, something could happen to this board. Leave it on continuously like for months on and then such people will might just switch it on and leave it like that. If a server is installed, some people might just leave it on, switch it on. So you will have to put this heat sink. It's better if you have a um, um, fan here which is suitable for this slot. That's a slot here to keep the fan. There, this is a slot. This slot could, uh, this is the fan holes. So this slot could hold a fan. But I bought a fan. This fan I bought but uh, it's too bulky so it's not fitting in this slot. So I can keep the fan there. So the next thing, so we have put this, uh, we, so we have put this uh, Raspberry Pi Noobs installer which contains a couple of operating system onto this and now we have, we are going to put this Raspberry Pi 2B onto the Pi desktop frame. So this is how you do it. Just push it in and it's installed. There's nothing more to it. But uh, don't press it if it's not completely straight onto the holes here. Don't press it and break it. If you break it, then the Raspberry Pi is damaged. So now I have placed it. See these holes? These holes are in place. Now what we have to do is 
take these larger, larger screws and then put it there. Before that, one thing I want to do is you have to install this fan, uh, this uh, camera. Camera has to be installed here. There's a hole particularly for the camera, meant for the camera. It's written camera here. So you just place it this thing you will know once you see this slot you will know what to do <coughs> the slot is placed in such a way with a lock so that this camera end this camera end has to go into this next to this hole so that the camera will work the slot has got a lock on it so you just you will understand when you see it you put inside it in that's all it's installed the camera is installed so what you next do is one part one when you buy this camera one portion will be stuck onto the camera itself and the next portion this is the camera port here you see the camera port so what you do is you stick it onto this camera port and lock it there's a lock there now what we intend to do is i intend to do is place this these screws there so what do we have there we have put the uh, Raspberry Pi noobs installed and the memory card is inside that. Don't, don't forget that. Now I have put one screw. The second screw is coming. I'm installing the screws. So that the Pi is lodged correctly onto the desktop, Pi desktop. Install the screws. What we do is you have to pull this up, don't tear it off. You will have to watch the YouTube, I think. There is this lock here which you have to pull, pull up, dismantle it. First, the lock has to be released, otherwise, this won't go in. And you place it inside like this with the blue side facing these the RJ45 and the USB now just place it in like that you place it in correctly and push the lock in I'm pushing the lock in right now I place the wire and this cable there and I'm going to push the lock in I push the lock, lock in. The, the lock, lock is here. So I pushed it in. You may be able to see it now on the video. Securely place it like that. What it does is, is it lock the cable to the Raspberry Pi motherboard. 
Now you have to bend this. This way. You have to bend it like this. Bend it somehow, but don't let it tear. Because it, it has to come like this. And then you place this board. I place the battery here on this slot. This takes care of the RTC clock. There's a clock inside the this board. This is an external board which comes with the Pi desktop. This is a MSATA port. But I don't have a MSATA, it's too costly. I'm trying to do it with a USB drive. So you see this, this port is, I place the battery here, press it in the battery, see these notches and then you got these slots here which you align towards this, these pins. So you push it like that, don't break anything, just see to it that the uh, pins are going to go into the slot of this board. The Raspberry Pi 2B is on the bottom, placed, already placed. You have to hold this side, these sides. So that you could easily press it into the, uh, those pins. Onto those pins, the slot should be correctly pushed in. Now see the these cable here is holding on. Everything is done but good. And these are facing here, and the ports are all seem, seemingly aligned. This is a LAN USB and uh, power. 4 USBs, LAN, power. This is something, I guess, which you used to install the software onto it later on. That's what it's supposed to be. So everything has been kept on top. Now there are 4 screws. Could screw it easily in there. These 4 holes should see that it's aligned. Place it in. It's got a it's got the, there are four screws, screw holes here, place it in and use a screwdriver. So that's done. Likewise, you've got four screws, three more screws. So, to do this, screw it. Don't twist it a lot into it to make it very secure. Just leave it as soon as it tightens, just leave it. Do not tighten it more, so otherwise if you tighten it more, the board underneath will crack. Whatever you do with, the, with these kinds of boards, you don't turn it or twist it more than you ought to do. Like it, once it is secure, just leave it. Don't twist it more onto the board. Otherwise if you twist it, it might break. There are tiny connections within these board as well. There are layers on this board five layers maybe and underneath the layers there's sm small uh, copper connections will be there even if you screw this too tightly it will snap so the connectivity will be gone lost in this board so don't screw it too hard just once it tightens a bit just leave it like that so it has been set i've screwed the raspberry pi onto the pi desktop then on top that board with the battery and that uh, um, little as a memory card has been put onto the Raspberry Pi 2B with the noobs as well. So this has been secured. I don't have any MSAT so I am leaving it like that. So what we do now is we can close this. We want to be close this. So you see this is the this is the uh, switch which is meant to be pressed to reboot and restart 
uh, or switch off the Raspberry Pi once you install the Debian package onto the whatever operating system you have installed on the Pi. So then you see this switch, the switch has to be aligned on top, on towards the top of this mini, mini miniature switch here. There you see this switch. So you have this switch. So you should press it like. So the camera is installed. These are installed. Put it on. Now everything has been perfectly installed. So we have everything installed. Now what we have to do is we will have to give the connections. The connections is I have got this onto my Ava Media card. There's a USB so that I could record it. So that I could record it and show you the software part of the system. So there you have the LAN USB I showed you. And the, on this side is the HDMI and the AV port. The HDMI port, you can plug this. I have connected the HDMI to the Avermedia card, which is a gamer's card, which could record whatever which goes into the HDMI slot, which is plugged behind uh, which, and uh, installed on my PCI Express inside my computer PCI cabinet. So now what we have is this is done. Now next is, this is the LAN which I have connected to my switch, the LAN port. So I am going to plug it onto this. So the LAN is connected. As you can see the LAN is connected. Now the power I have connected onto my power switch board. And, and it is a USB power which is 5 volt. 3 amps or 2.5 amps, whichever you prefer. I have. I'm going to plug it onto the power. There you can see the power slot here. I'm going to plug it into it. So that once I switch out from there, the, the power circuit, the Raspberry Pi gets a power. Stuck. Now it's completely set here this way. And then I have this KVM switch here. This KVM switch can connect the mouse and keyboard to two peri peripherals. Like one, the mouse, one with one mouse and one keyboard, you can operate the PC as and to, onto this side. If, uh, if you plug it in, if you plug a USB cable and connect it to the Raspberry Pi or other peripheral, this mouse and keyboard can connect to that as well while pressing the switch and switching from one PC to the other peripheral. You don't have to connect that this screen yeah, screen portion I didn't connect because it's already connected to the HDMI into my card once you press this my uh, keyboard and the mouse will go to the Raspberry Pi and once I press this once more again it comes to this portion so this uh, USB has to be connected onto the Raspberry Pi's USB yeah, this is the best thing so what do we, what we do is plug it onto this USB. See, it's connected. So this KVM switch has this KVM switch has been connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now what all accessories I have is I have this uh, Wi-Fi antenna. You know, Raspberry Pi 2B doesn't come with inbuilt Wi-Fi. So I have this with me. Be sure that you don't connect it towards this. I guess so maybe it can be installed I don't know. So we'll connect it here. This, this port has to be left accessible. Now I have this uh, uh, so these are installed and uh, I have a USB 3.0 flash drive here I took it out of this pack just now this gives me a 5 year warranty if I have to keep this I have to keep this uh, cover and the store will give me a 5 year warranty if something goes wrong with this or if it doesn't work I will be able to show along with this cover and get the warranty for this so what we do is we plug this 3.0 this. this is something which I 
understood uh, if it is a M SATA, I figured out that this M, if the M SATA is kept on the top board, this portion uh, will be plugged like this, so that the top board is here, the power is going to the top board. Top board is connected like this. So if, it, if you disconnect it, then the top board has the M SATA, that M SATA will be connected to the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi can access the M SATA, so that's what this is. This is for, this is a USB connector, hub from the mini USB to the bigger USB. I don't require it as I am using this flash drive. So this flash drive is USB 3.0, it's the legacy operating system for the Raspberry Pi. For the legacy operating system for the Raspberry Pi should have these uh, 3.0 drivers, very old uh, Raspbian and Jesse or maybe some other operating systems or maybe if you are installing a server onto it, you should have the 3.0 drivers. If it is a new operating system, it will have the 3.0 drivers of course. And uh, just make sure that it has the 3.0 if you want to boot from this or to be accessible from the pipe, you should have uh, support the 3.0. New operating system can have. So I am just pushing users into it. So now this is all set. So we have the power here. The power is connected. The LAN is connected. The KVM switch is connected here. My keyboard and mouse is connected here. The wireless, this gadget, this, ga this wireless uh, antenna I can use as this is a Pi 2B. It doesn't have inbuilt Wi-Fi. So this uh, Wi-Fi uh, antenna can be connected to another Raspberry Pi. Maybe I have an ad hoc connection. I could connect it, even though if I could, I prefer to leave it out of the uh, switch or the LAN uh, directly plugged in onto the RJ45 switch or uh, uh, router or such. I could have an ad hoc connection, so that's why I can, I'm keeping this, the, keeping this antenna here. To be request an antenna, RJ45 is already connected, so we have the gaming switch. The antenna, the, this flash drive. RJ45 and the power. So this is all set hardware wise. Now about the KVM switch is quite handy. Uh, it is uh, the KVM switch is used to connect two or three or more perif um, uh, peripherals to one keyboard and a mouse or maybe some other peripheral like drawing equipment or something would connect to, uh, to all those peripherals maybe four PCs maybe five PCs. This is meant for two PCs or two peripherals. For this my use I am using it one for one port for Raspberry Pi and uh, one port, uh, this is the mouse, this is the keyboard and the mouse, this this is accessible to, this is the PC, it, it can be connected to the PC, now it is connected to the PC, if I press this button it should, it should be able to connect to the Raspberry Pi, the peripheral, that is the mouse and the keyboard would be able to be connected to the Raspberry Pi and I can use without SSH, so I don't have to SSH onto it, I can use this, directly I can control it. And uh, it, uh, this is the use of the cable switch. You can connect to the PS4 as well if it has got more connectivity. This is only for two peripherals. I want two. So if I press this, this is goes to the, the mouse and the keyboard. This is the keyboard and this is the mouse. It goes to the PC and if I press this, the mouse and the keyboard goes to the Raspberry Pi. This is connected to the Raspberry Pi. If I have PS, if the PS4 is there, uh, I can, uh, if it is a four port extended one, I can connect one more USB here and connect it to the PS4 as well and use this uh, job stick or press button to connect to the PS4, PC as well as the Raspberry Pi or any other PCs or other peripherals which require the mouse and the keyboard. So that is the use of this KVM switch. This is very less uh, cheap and expensive. It's not that much, maybe one or two dollars. It's very uh, cheap. Uh, cheap. I mean, uh, it's not that expensive. This is a very good tool, so it will last. You don't have to buy the HDMI one for the PS4. HDMI uh, requires a very costly KVM switch. So it looks the same, but the port is uh, not VG, it's a HDMI. If you want to connect it like that, I have a gamer card, so the HDMI could be connected from the PS4 to the gamer card, and the mouse and keyboard can be connected through here to the PS4 as well. Now this another one, uh, which is extended to connect other peripherals. So this is the KVM switch. This is a good accessory for the Pi desktop. So we have the HDMI going to the 
PCI uh, Express uh, gamer card inside my PC cabinet, and we have the AV out. And we have the AV outlet here that the HDMI is connected to the gamer card, and, and uh, then we have uh, the 45 power. This out. so that's it. The hardware uh, is of the Pi desktop. Tell from element 14 has been set. And the next portion about the uh, software installation to boot from this uh, boot from this uh, flash drive, I'll show on the next video. Uh, right now I have my job, but in half an hour, one hour, my job will start online. I'm doing an online job, so my job is going to start. So I can't install anything right now. The Noobs is already in the memory card, so it's easy just to install it. And on top of it, the Debian package, which lets the this. Uh, switch function and uh, then I have to transfer from the, uh, the SD card to this. I can uh, dual boot it. I can dual boot from the SD card, the noobs and uh, other operating systems which are downloaded to the SD card as well as from this I could install any server like the Blink server or any other servers which I, I need. There are other servers which could be installed in the Raspberry Pi 2B or 3. So this um, uh, this flash drive uh, will be good enough. 64 GB it's got so servers and all could be installed onto it and leave it open. But make sure that uh, if you don't buy that USB plug, the power one, if you buy it a less expensive one, it might burn out and cause a flash. So to be sure you get a good solid one. The, uh, that uh, power USB, uh, 5 volt, 3 ampere or 2.4 amperes, whichever you buy, you should buy an expensive one. Uh, if you leave it on, maybe heat, if it gets more heat and if it heats up and fire, so you should get an expensive one, that's very important. So this is uh, absolutely okay. The element 14 uh, Pi desktop has been installed hardware-wise. So that's it. Thank you very much. Please uh, watch out for my next uh, uh, software installation video for this. Hardware is done. Servers, if I have to install uh, onto it, the other servers I'll show show you on other videos if I find that time away from my job. So thank you very much. Good evening. Have a nice day. Peace.